Peace, family. How you doing? Um, just want to drop in real quick. Uh, I was resting in bed and then thinking and then some of the thoughts came rushing in. And so that's why I'm uh, recording in the dark. Um, but I see a pattern emerging. So it was just uh, the other day that we saw two Compton police officers get gunned down um, and are in critical, serious critical uh, condition. Um, they're inside their uh, police vehicle and a suspect uh, approached them and, you know, shot them multiple times. Uh, right now, they say they're critical and everything. Now, where I'm going with this is how I say that they always say time has a way of repeating itself. And I think what we're going to see is a cycle emerge. Now, I would flash everybody's mind back to the year of 1988, specifically February of 1988. Queens, New York, during the, the height of the crack era, during that time in Queens, you had the Supreme Team that was ran by Kenneth Supreme the Griff. It was also ran by his uh, family member, uh, Fritz. Um, and he also had associations with uh, Fat Cat, who was another Queens uh, drug kingpin. And associate uh, Howard Pappy Mason. Now, what happened was uh, in February uh, 1988, uh, of course, you had a lot of people within the Queens residential neighborhoods where there was a lot of uh, drugs going on, a lot of drug dealing, uh, a lot of narcotics transactions going on uh, within the residential community. And it said that there was a uh, a resident that stayed in this corner house. Uh, I think his name was Arjun. I don't know if it's his first name or his last name, but they always refer to him as Arjun. But I guess he kind of uh, tipped the police hand to a lot of the narcotics transaction that was going on right in the vicinity of his house. And I guess the word got back to um, the Supreme Team, um, his associates. And the story goes is that, you know, the police had positioned a officer and police cruiser outside of Arjun's uh, house as a form of protection and symbol to let people know that he is being you know, protected by New York Police Department, NYPD. Uh, what happened was you had a rookie officer by the name of Ed Burns who was positioned there one night uh, in his police vehicle. And you had two, two guys uh, creep up on the side of his police cruiser uh, and shoot him uh, through the window and killed him. Um, that stirred up a tremendous amount of um, mm, vitriol and hate and tension between law enforcement and the community. A lot of tension um, between the community and law enforcement. And what happened was that you had uh, George Bush Sr. who was campaigning for uh, the presidency at the time. Uh, he went around the country using the death of Officer Ed Byrne, who was killed in the line of duty. Um, you know, he, he campaigned with... Uh, and, and Ed, Ed Byrne at the time was a rookie. I, th I think he was in his like earlier mid-20s. He, he wasn't even 30 years old yet. 
um, he went around the country, President Bush went around the country, this is Bush Sr., with uh, Ed Burns' father, and he he kept Ed Burns' uh, police badge. And, you know, as he would stump going from state to state, um, you know, that using that whole position of law and order and tough on crime, um, that he used that to uh, crowbar and shoehorn uh, his way into office as people felt that the streets were unstable, uh, the streets were precarious, there need to be more law enforcement and more order because the crack era of the 80s going into the early 90s was just so unstable and there need to be some type of, of order, there need to be authority, and somebody had to take it by the reins. And so fast forward now, looking at, and I'm lining this stuff up, we're in a presidential election that's right on the heels, literally uh, two months at the most, uh, away. And with that, you have the Democratic and Republican Party. Uh, both parties are eager and desperate and attempting and engaging in all means of of uh, engaging and trying to captivate uh, the vote, the winning vote. Um, now, we also have to keep in mind the social order of the day. What is the social tension? What is the racial tension? What is the tension in the streets? Well, it's pretty much... Um, we, we, we see this uh, in pretty much every other city or state. People are protesting. People are angry. Um, there's a lot of tension between the community and the police, the police and the community. Um, we have this whole thing with Blue Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter. We have everybody crying out for law and order versus those saying defund the police and we need more uh, accountability to police um, and police should be punished for uh, police brutality uh, and breaking the law and abuse of the badge and it's a lot of tension and on the heels of these two officers being shot uh, and critically injured and you know as of now, as, as I'm speaking as of now, I'm not, I don't know, you know, it, their situation can get progressively worse and they may die or they may pull through. But all I'm saying is, I believe the same way that George Bush seized upon the opportunity to take uh, the tragic killing of Officer Ed Burns, uh, murder, and campaign on that, I believe that Donald Trump is going to use this shooting uh, and injuring of these two young uh, Compton police officers and do the same George Bush uh, playbook tactic and try and ride that whole law in order, um, you know, strong arm, uh, heavy handed. Uh, there must be order type dogma and philosophy to kind of push and propel himself uh, ahead in the in the race in the polls uh, and pretty much repeat that. So I believe we're going to see that. I, I, I don't believe we're going to see uh, Donald Trump leave this alone until the election is over. These the shooting of these two officers will stay in the headlines until uh, election day. Uh, and I'll put my money on that. And uh, with that said, that is the...
cycle that I see reemerging and time repeating itself. All right.